Well, welcome. It is good to see you here as we kick off the 2022-23 uh, legislative session. Uh, I have the honor of introducing myself. I'm Mark Johnson, uh, newly elected Republican Senate Caucus leader today. I am flanked uh, by some of my colleagues uh, who are also been uh, elected to Senate leadership uh, in that capacity. So we have Senator Bill Weber, Senator Karen Housley, Senator Justin Eichhorn, and Senator Coleman. Uh, we have really spent a lot of time here today going through uh, what we believe uh, is going to be a great session, organizing our caucus to prepare for a new role in the Minnesota State Senate. Uh, so we have a number of things that we want to discuss uh, going forward, but a lot of our priorities are what we went out and we door knocked and we were talking to people. That's about getting the surplus back to Minnesotans. Minnesotans pay those taxes, let's get that money back to Minnesotans. It's also about public safety. How do we make people feel safer? Mom's going to the store, dad's going to work. How do we make them feel safer? We also want parent and student success. That's a priority for us, and we are dedicated to ensuring that we do our part in making sure that the bills coming through the Senate reflect those priorities. And finally, we want to make sure that, that we are doing permanent ongoing tax relief and uh, holding the Democrats accountable for their promises that they had through the session uh, that they wanted to cut taxes as well. So we want to see those permanent ongoing tax, tax relief week after week, month after month, and year after year. So with that, uh, we're happy to take some questions. Of course, we're, we haven't gotten into policy. We haven't done that. We, today was all about organizing the caucus, and we're at a good spot, spot with that. So any questions regarding that or, or, what, or anything else? Um, the things you listed off and holding Democrats accountable for the promises they made through the session, there was that deal on the table. Is that deal ready to be moved as it died? at the end of session? Well, you know, those are discussions that uh, former Senate Majority Leader uh, Miller had with his uh, counterparts on that. Uh, we still have some time left in the session uh, as him as leader, so that's discussions that they're going to have to be taking uh, into account. We're looking at the next session coming up. That's what this so leadership team is. Happen. Right. When you begin the next session, let's say it's none of that's been acted upon. You we'll take it up to, and pass. We'll take it one day at a time. That's something we're going we're gonna to have to look at going forward. Senator, uh, you have some experience in dealing with a very tiny uh, majority, and now the DFL is going to have to do that. Having just a one-seat minority is not a horrible place to be because you only need to pick off a vote or two on any given issue. How do you plan to manage uh, that? Right. I, I think one of our biggest things is ensuring that we're talking to Minnesotans making sure that we're having those communications to know what their priorities and needs are. And then we can go to those events uh, where, where we're taking votes on the floor or in committee and being able to say, hey, here's what Minnesotans are telling us. Why aren't you doing that, Senate DFL? We want to make sure that we're holding them accountable to the Minnesotans uh, across the state. So yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. We're going to hold tight. We're going to be a, a strong 33. We've done this for a long time now, for the last six years, so I'm pretty excited. We've had a lot of experience within uh, those small margins. So you won't have a rump caucus from Draskowski then? <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited about every one of our members. They are fantastic people. So you did all gather this morning for the first time, the new members, and so can you just tell us a little bit about what that was like with the new people coming in? Sure. So it's, everybody's hot off the campaign trail, uh, so it's, it's really fun because they're bringing the ideas They've knocked doors. Uh, I think Senator Abler had 21,000 doors that he knocked this year. I mean, it, it's amazing the amount of contacts and information and data points that we're pulling back from those discussions. So today was really a, a good debrief on what can we adjust, how can we make those adjustments. And the fun thing is a lot of the things that we were talking about, you know, putting more money back in Minnesotans' pockets, making the streets safer, doing those things for students that will improve their success, uh, those were the things that we heard over and over and over. 21,000 times, I think, for April. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I think we're going to be focusing on those things. Where, what are some areas you think you can work with uh, Democrats on come next year? Yeah, so, I, again, that's going to be one of those day-by-day -day, uh, issues. I think uh, there, we've got a number of things. We all care about Minnesotans. And so where those interests overlap, 
and the priorities overlap, we're going to try very, very hard to be working with them and be a real team with, with them on getting those over the, over the finish line. Can you reflect a little bit on the outcome of Tuesday's elections and the fact that you guys are now here in the minority and not the majority? Yeah, it, it's, uh, I think it was a, a break that, that could have gone either way. It was a national, it was a national thing and, uh, you know, specific races I, I can't comment on. That's all local issues. So uh, whether it's a candidate, whether it's a strategy, um, we were so close. You know, if you look at that, we're a few hundred or a thousand votes away in, in switching the majority on either way. So uh, I don't think we can... Uh, take away any particular lesson on a, on a given uh, race or anything, but uh, it was a, a disappointing night for the caucus, but, uh, but an interesting night. Senator Benson mentioned that Gen Z may be a sort of a weaker area for the Republican caucus. Will that be something that you think about going forward, about these younger voters that, that voted? Um, and then, you know, the fact that there are more and more younger voters coming, you know, every election cycle. Well, are they Minnesotans? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm if we <laughs> care about them. We want to get to know them. We want to see what their needs are. And things are changing. That's why, if you look at the faces up here, I mean, we try to spread out as far as who are we representing, what groups are we representing, uh, the younger groups, the older groups. Um, we want to know what people are thinking. And, and Gen Z, if they feel left out, that's a group that we're going to be paying a lot of attention to, too. So, absolutely. If they're Minnesotans and they have a say in this country, in this state, we're with them. Many of us know you, but not in a leadership role. Can you just talk a little bit about how you plan to preside over the caucus and a little bit about yourself personally and your style? Well, yeah, I, I guess we could talk a little bit about that. So, I'm far northwest Minnesota. Uh, the joke that I can always tell, it's the dad joke, is I am the number one district in Minnesota which has been a very, uh, very neat area to, to get to be, uh, to know, to understand. Uh, that's where I grew up uh, in the Crookston uh, area up there. So I've got War Road, uh, Roseau, Thief River Falls, uh, that neck of the woods. But, you know, our, our, the way that we do things, Senator Miller was very good at this when, when he was majority leader and also, well, he's still majority leader, uh, but also Senator Gazelka was communicating. How do we communicate with the caucus? How do we communicate with the press? How do we communicate with the House? It's about communication and not one-way communication, but getting that back and forth so you know how to adjust and pivot. Uh, and they were very good, and I plan on doing very, very similar things uh, going forward. Your Democratic peers have said one of their top priorities in 2023 will be codifying the right to an abortion. Um, what are your thoughts about that, and do you think Minnesotans align with that priority? Again, that, that's something I haven't seen a bill or language, and we'll take that one one day at a time. For the infrastructure, infrastructure spending uh, requires matching funds, and some of that would be through bonding, which would require Republican support, bipartisan support. Um, one of the, the projects that comes up a lot is the Duluth uh, uh, direct train, and, and so I know some people in your caucus supported that and others didn't. Do you know where you're going to be on that? No. Today was simply an organizing caucus, and that will be a priority we, we evaluate. And I know you're still trying to work on your agenda and whatnot, but again, your counterparts are saying things like legalizing marijuana and sports gambling, those types of things are likely to be on the agenda, both in the House and Senate. Where does your caucus, do you have any idea where your caucus stands on those issues? Yeah, so no bills have been dropped uh, on that for the 23 session, uh, so we haven't seen any language. Again, that's something that we're going to be evaluating as a, as a caucus because we communicate what our constituents want to see. We're going to see what the needs are, whether it's Gen Z or the older generations. Um, it's something that we highly communicate at the time when we see the language. So uh, again, I can't give you any specifics on that until, until it happens. Okay. Your caucus was the bulwark against Democratic control for the last couple of years. How you guys voted was the only thing holding back the agenda of the Democrats. What's your message to Republicans out there who sort of out of habit might be looking to Senate Republicans to please save us um, from the Democratic agenda. What, what's your message to them today? Yeah, so I, that's a really good question. I mean, we are going to be communicating with them as well. Uh, and, you know, here are the bills that are coming up. Here's how we're voting, and here's why we're voting on those. I, you know, we, we just have to have that open communication and, 
and that's going to be a top priority for us. And right now that we're in, uh, you know, we're one, one member short of a majority, uh, that's going to be our strategy is, is making sure that we're constantly communicating with constituents and each other uh, through this process. Would you, would you support any changes to the rules that uh, prevent you from making direct eye contact? contact with other senators uh, uh, during debates, uh, board debates? That, that's kind of an obscure question, but uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I, I don't foresee it. But uh, anyways, it's, uh, yeah, I kind of like not having to look at people, you know, it's, it's good, but appreciate it. Inflation reports today say inflation's down and uh, still overly high. Are you guys wanting to get, is there any bills you're wanting, rebate checks, social security tax cuts? Uh, anything specific like you guys are thinking on inflation? Sure. So what we want to do as a Senate Re Republican caucus is make sure that we are communicating, talking about what we want to see. But I, I think for the most part, our priorities is getting money back to Minnesotans, reducing taxes, it, you know, making sure there's safe streets and that parents and children are feeling safe at school and they're progressing in school. I mean, uh, inflation's a big issue, and it's something that we wish that we could do more about at this point. But uh, again, we had an organizing uh, caucus today, and we don't want to move beyond that. Your caucus was opposed to the rebate checks. Are you more open to that now that the governor was proposing? Uh, again, you know, it was an organizing caucus, and but we need to. This is a pretty broad issue. I think you all know where you stand. On that issue, can you Tom, speak I, to I that? appreciate that, but I can't speak on behalf of the college. We have not had no communication since, uh, you know, during this election season on these type of issues uh, within the caucus, especially with the new members. So I appreciate that question, but I, I just can't answer that. Are you, time for one or two more here. Are you generally in favor of organizing caucuses? <laughs> <laughs> well, give us some. Oh, caucus, yes. All right. But thank you. <laughs> Did Senator Miller train you on the week after week, month after month, year after year? <laughs> Was that a little pep talk before you got in? We, we can talk about that later. Uh, I just think it's a really good idea. <laughs> All right, thanks, All right. guys. Thank you. Thank you.